I'm George Giltner from TechPoint Foundation for Youth, and I'm going to walk you through on how to install and use VexCode IQ Blocks to write your first program for your robot. Before we dive into VexCode IQ Blocks, you actually need to install a different program to make sure that all the devices that you want to program are up to date to the latest version. If you're wanting to use an iPad to program your robot, you're going to actually need to use a PC or Mac to install firmware on your robot first, and then you can go to the iPad to program it. So, let me walk you through on how to do this. You're going to go to the website, Vex Robotics, and at the very top, we're going to select IQ, and over here under Downloads, we're going to go to Vex OS Operating System Firmware. So we're going to start there before we actually get to the coding. This is a pretty commonly misstep where a lot of people do not update the devices before they start to program. I like the graphics down here because it's going to show us really the process of what we're going to do. We're going to download the VEX operating system utility. We're going to connect all of the devices that we'll use on a robot, which would include the remote, any motors, or sensors that we'll use. You'll turn on the brain, and this is what the program will look like. It's very simple. It will detect everything that you have plugged in via USB, and you'll click on Install to install the update for all of those devices. Yellow means that they're out of date, and once you click Install, they'll all turn green to show that they are up to date, current, and ready to be used and programmed. So I'm going to click on Download. I'm going to save it on my desktop. You can save it wherever, and you're going to open up the VEX OS operating system utility setup and you need to make sure your computer has administrative rights in order to install this on the computer. I already have this installed on my computer but for you you would go through this process and hitting next all the way to the end to make sure it's installed and then I also recommend that you restart your computer after you install the software. I've already gone through that process I've installed it I've restarted my computer so let me just go ahead and open it up for you show you what it looks like. This is it. It's very really simple. Um, what it's going to do is it's checking. You can see here, here's your computer checking the internet to see if there's any updates. There is not for me. Um, if it is, it'll tell you there's an update. So it will up install the update on your computer. And then it's looking for any VEX uh, brain that's connected to the devices as you see in this graphic behind here. All right, let me show you how you're going to get all of the firmware that's on your VEX operating system on your computer onto your VEX IQ brain, remote, motors, and any sensors you have attached. You're going to need the USB cable that you use to charge your remote. You'll need the tether cable that looks like an Ethernet cable. And you're going to plug both of those into the side of your brain right here where it says download and tether. So I'm just going to take the micro USB cable and plug this into the side of the brain and I'm going to take the blue cable and plug it into tether. Now the other end of the blue cable is just going to plug right into the other side of the remote where it also says tether and I'm going to plug in the USB cable as you could probably guess into the computer. So what it'll look like when it's all done is you will have um, your brain already attached to your motors. So you can see in this example my motors, I have two of them, are going to be attached already to my brain on ports 1 and 6. The blue Ethernet cable is going to my remote and the USB cable is going to plug into my computer. And once I do that, as long as my brain is turned on, my brain is turned on, on the VEX OS utility, um, it should recognize everything that you have. So you can see I now have motor one and six plugged in. I have my remote and I have the brain. They're all turned green, meaning everything is updated. If they are yellow, um, what's going to happen right here is on this button right here, it'll say install. You'll hit the install button and it'll go through and go ahead and install all the firmware that you need on any of the motors, remotes, um, brain, or even radio uh, that's out of date. All right, now that you've installed the firmware on your brain, I'm going to show you how you can actually install the VEX IQ block software on your iPad and then wirelessly you can communicate with the brain and the iPad to actually program. Now, 
The only thing that you'll need for these two is a brain and an iPad. But the only brains that will work are the ones that have the Bluetooth radio. And the Bluetooth radios are blue. Um, there are gray, there's black, you just need to make sure yours is blue so that it can communicate via Bluetooth. So that was creative of Vex to use that. On your iPad, you do need to have administrative rights so that you can install the software. So I'm going to walk you through that. You're going to go to the App Store and you're going to type in Vex code and it's popped up right there, IQ Blocks. So I'm going to just click on that. And I've already installed this, so I'm not going to show you how to download it, but you would click on that uh, to download it. You would install it. You might have to type in your iTunes password. And when you're done, you'll get a icon on your desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that icon. This is the software. So it's really easy to use. Most of your students have probably used Scratch before. It looks very similar to Scratch. You have commands over here, your codes over here. Um, but I'm going to show you how to write your first line of code and how to actually get it onto the brain, which is a little bit more tricky. So very simple command says print hello. We're going to get our brain to say hello. So you just click and drag. So I'm clicking, I'm dragging, and they're like little puzzle pieces. So I let go and they click together. Okay. And if I successfully get that to the brain, it's going to say hello. But in order to do that wirelessly, we have to set up our brain um, correctly first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my brain. And I actually have to turn the Bluetooth settings on. This is a common mistake where a lot of teachers or coaches get stumped and not knowing what to do. So here's how you enable the Bluetooth so that these two communicate. Uh, from the main screen, I'm going to go into settings and scroll all the way to the bottom where it says radio data. By default, it is turned off. I'm going to hit the checkbox to turn it on. And what it does is if you look to the left of those little bars or signals, you've got these two arrows. That, those two arrows point up and down are indicating that it is searching for a Bluetooth connection. So we're going to now go back to our iPad and right under brain, it's searching for the brain. So I'm going to click on brain. And what we need to do is it says add a brain. So I'm going to click plus. And now it's asking, what is the brain ID? Most of you probably don't know that. So we're going to go back to the brain and get that ID. So on the same screen that you're already on for settings, we're just going to scroll back to the very, very top where it says system info. We're going to hit the check mark. And right there it says ID 381218. That's the ID. So we're going to type in on our iPad 3 eight, one, two, one, eight. I'm going to hit submit. And what it's going to do is it is going to start searching for that, uh, that brain. So I'm going to give it a second. Now, you notice right now it says that it's trying to connect, not connecting, try powering off and turning back on the brain. So mine isn't connecting. I'm going to try that right now. So I'm just going to cycle power. So I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to turn it back on. And over here, hopefully, my brain is going to turn green. And it did. It connected. So that's something uh, that's an important step. I'm trying to turn that off, turn it back on. And now we're on the, the home stretch. We're ready to actually get this code to get onto the brain. So we're just going to click on download right here. And this might take a minute. So it says, would you like to save your project? We're going to say yes. We're going to save it. This is a folder most of you might not be familiar with. This is deep down somewhere in your iPad. It's saying, where, what do you want to call it? There's a little plus sign right here in the top right corner. I'm going to click on that plus sign, and I'm going to type file name. I'll just call it George. It's my name. Hit OK. And my code will be called George. And in fact, at the very top up here, it was renamed George. But as soon as I start saving it, it is now downloading. And it might take a little bit longer for some of you. Uh, the closer it is, the better the connection. So it's all done. Now, if you look over here on my brain, the very first line of code, it says George under slot one. So in order for it to now say hello, we're going to hit the, the check mark. 
on George. We're going to run program George. And if we did everything right, it should say hello. We've just written our first line of code using the iPad. We're going to show you more steps on coding in our Hour of Code tutorials. Thanks. Have fun.